Oh, jeez. Is that really a lacy police officer? Jeez. Let's keep going. Keep going. Keep driving. Keep pushing. That's right. That's right. Don't look back. <laughs> oh, are you serious? What did I do? What does this guy want here? I got, oh, he's waving at me. Let me go see what's going on. Oh, he said he knows me. He's one of my viewers. Well, that's cool. Well, hey, if you're one of my viewers, let me go grab you a sticker. Wait right there. I'm going to go grab one. Hold tight. Yeah, yeah, always doing my part. Got to give all the cops a sticker. All right, man. Thanks a lot. Have a good day. That was easy. That was painless. Huh. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Eric here, Nomadic Fanatic, uploading this video with some Nomad Internet later. Link in the video description if you need some mobile Wi-Fi internet. Uh... Does this look weird with the cars over there coming this way? Uh, leaving, leaving, leaving Lacey, actually probably staying in Lacey today. Uh, we're going to go through this diverging diamond thing once again a completely different way. Look at this. As we go all the way over to the left side as if we're in a different country. <laughs> it is the strangest thing ever, guys. I'm telling you what. What do I do? I go like this? Okay, so I go all the way over here to go north on I-5 to Seattle. That was weird. Is this not the strangest thing ever? Okay, anyway, it is the butt crack of dawn officially. There's that pesky sun right in my face, in my eyes. I can't see a thing. Um, let's see here. My tattoo is doing really good. Just put some more uh, goop on it. I'm almost blinded here, guys, by the way. Oh, okay. Cool, cool. And uh, waiting for a phone call from Coombs RV. Still waiting on that hydraulic motor part. Hopefully any day now. It's been almost a week, so I expect that part to be in stock. And then it's just a matter of... Uh, essentially sitting at the shop and, and waiting patiently. I can't even see anything. I'll get back to you guys. Okay, that's a little better. You see the fog out in the distance over there? It is so creepy. Gonna be doing something a little different here, not in Lacey. We're the neighboring Nisqually. Actually, it's a Native American reservation uh, land out here. Still open to the public and whatnot, but I think it's time to try something brand new. Man, that sun is brutal in the morning. How about salmon fishing? I've never been, guys. I do have a salmon pole, though, so uh, <laughs> that's, what, that's, that's what we're gonna... It is impossible to see the... I don't know if the camera lets you see better, but I am just struggling to see where the road goes. Man, that's brutal. It's been a while since I've been over to this uh, train trussle fishing spot here. Uh, it's only 6 a.m. and it looks like some of these mountains are gonna keep the sun at bay for a little bit. That's good. Cause uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think the salmon are gonna be biting once it gets warm. It is 53 degrees here at 6 a.m. It's my kind of morning weather. It's perfect. Make a cup of coffee, sit out there and do some... Maybe I shouldn't film it because I never catch fish when I film. <laughs> Jeez, this place is busy as heck. I've never seen this place this busy. There's almost nowhere to park. And it's kind of soft sand too. Let me, um... Let me see here. Hey, first, let's go see if there's any room down there because it does look a little crowded. Oh, <laughs> I almost forgot to share with you. It may be a little early in the season. Usually I don't bring Skeletor out until closer to Halloween. But obviously I've added a little fun sign. And uh, guys, the whole point of this is just to make people smile and laugh. Get a giggle out of somebody, okay? If they pass me on the interstate or the road, drive by, give me a thumbs up, laugh, you know, wave or something like that. Take, take a picture and post it on social media. They're also going to get Nomadic Fanatic logo in the shot. So it's kind of marketing, but it's also just... Let me look at the smile. How can you not love Skeletor, right? And I mean, you just gotta laugh at it, right? You just have to. So, uh, Skeletor is gonna be riding on the back uh, through Halloween now. That's right. Bringing out the big salmon pole today. 
There's the green Nisqually River. And it looks like there's a lot of people down here at the bank. There's my buddy Andrew down there. He's usually out here before me. Look how green that water is. I'll have to check my fishing license, but I believe August 1st was the first day that uh, salmon fishing was allowed again. Uh, this, this river here, this freshwater river, will go to the ocean downriver there. But the salmon come up here to uh, spawn and lay their eggs. And the problem is, usually they're also not very hungry when they get down here because they're on a mission. Like, they're literally only here. Oh, geez, this boat's going to go through everyone's line. everyone's line so that happens too if you hear the motor reel it in I real quick I guess let's go get set up so I'll show you what I got on my pole here I got the uh, the, the lead weight here which is gonna drag against the bottom of the river like that and then about 18 inch liter with corky and some yarn to attract and that's on the hook right there so uh, this is gonna drag on the water the current's gonna kind of move it down you can probably see a couple bobbers out there and then you don't want to snag so you'll you'll pull it in real quick like he's pulling in right there and we got two salmon that have already been caught down here and one being caught. and he's literally trying to catch one he's got one I definitely won't be able to say that there's no fish here if I don't catch any, but also some people are using the bobbers and some people are just dragging on, on the bottom here. I'm gonna try to drag for a little bit and see what happens. Well, it turns out there's no salmon in the Nisqually River. That's, that's, what, that's what I'm going with. No, it's fun out here, but once the sun starts peeking through here, there's there's no more bites, and we haven't seen anybody catch anything else since we started out here. So it's just kind of kind of slowed down. That's okay. <laughs> Had fun. Get back, check in on Jacks, get some breakfast. All right. Well. You know, again, I'm kind of playing this waiting game, waiting for the hydraulic part, waiting for a time slot to get in there. When the part arrives, I'm just going to overnight at Coombs and wait for like a no-show, a cancellation, last minute, somebody didn't, couldn't get in for theirs, and, and hopefully I can get in and get that hydraulic motor pump put in. Until then, I really am just kind of, I guess, sitting around type thing, but there is a project I need to do. And I think I'm gonna try to get it done today. We're gonna go back down to the West Coast Chehalis RV Recycling Salvage Yard. And I'm gonna try to find some fans and doors, louvers to cool the battery bay. So hopefully they're open. Let's, let's go check it out. They're about 35 miles south of here. All right, back here at my favorite RV toy store. West Coast RV Recycling. Um, this is my battery bank with my inverter and my Battleborn batteries and all that. It is getting 130 degrees in here, guys, in this enclosed box here. That is not good for any of the electronics. See, when I'm running the air conditioner off of solar, that inverter back there is really pumping out some heat. Now, yes, when I'm parked somewhere, I can uh, open this door and let it air out. But how comfortable am I walking away and going into a store or a museum or taking you guys with me and leaving jacks with air conditioning? I mean, that just, come on. I mean, you'd be dumb to touch anything right there because you might, you might die. But still, 
the wrong person may, may uh, do something. Also, when I'm driving down the highway, I'm running my air conditioner, my roof air conditioner off of solar. You can't have this open, so it's got to stay closed. It's time to finally vent it somehow. And uh, I, I am just going to make this up as I go. I, I don't have an input yet, but I, ha I was thinking about drilling one here and then exhausting it up here through a fan. But e either way, I'm going to go look and see what they got in here, used parts, and see if I can Frankenstein something up together to get this to vent. That'll be my fun project. So get back to you in a bit. All right. I am really, really happy with how that worked out at West Coast Recycling. Let me show you what I got. Two bucks a piece, I got two matching vents, which I think are kind of going to even match the brown. <laughs> You'd think I know what I'm doing here. Okay, the idea uh, is to install one down here. Oh my God, that looks so good too. And then a second one up here. The one up here, eventually, maybe even today, is going to have a fan exhausting the heat. The one down here is gonna be drawing air in. And because these are louvers, louvered like that, if it rains, water's not gonna get in there. However, I still need to get something for the back of it for the winter time so that it doesn't freeze inside the compartment. I'm not worried about right, that right now. We can wait about, we can wait a little bit. Um, I'm so glad that those kind of match the brown trim. And that's just, that's just too funny. But before I get started, um, what I often do when I'm doing projects like this is I've, I've come to a Home Depot where I can get the supplies that I might need. So I'm gonna go in right now and I'm gonna start looking at their DC fans. I know I tried this, like what, last summer I think in Flagstaff? Yeah, we, we, we tried this and the whole duct fan thing, there just wasn't enough room. But I'm gonna find a slimmer fan. Yep, I'm gonna go shopping, I'll be back. All right, I think I had pretty good luck there inside uh, Home Depot. I have put the awning out so I can have a little bit of shade and not be working in the sun, figured mine as well. This is my uh, side yard, so I'm not, I'm not bothering anybody here. And uh, so learning from my mistakes of what happened in Flagstaff and what didn't work, you know, using reducers and stuff, I don't have that much room in here. So what I went with is a 250 CFM inline duct fan. Okay, it's regular standard plug-in, so it'll plug into the outlet. However, I know we don't want to hook anything to this lid because I still want access to this compartment. So the fan's not going to be hooked to that. The vents will be installed here. I know I'm going to cut into the RV, but the fan is going to sit here and hover right there with some uh, hanger straps, some water heater hanger strap that's going to go around it and go into here with some self-tapping screws. I got some uh, tin snips to cut the, the hanger wrap. That way, every time you open this, the fan just kind of sits here, hovering over there. And hopefully we'll be drawing in some outer air from right here and blowing out the hotter air that accumulates up here back out. And again, I don't have to worry about it till this winter as far as uh, sealing these off, but I gotta get out my power tools. Put one there. Put one there, cutting into this. It's gotta get done, man. This, no RV, no RV out there anywhere was supposed to stay exactly as you bought it. You've got to make it yours. You've gotta make it functional and practical for full-time use. And that's why I love boondocking and not plugging in. So I'm gonna make this work. <laughs> I can't believe it. All right. going since I'm on such a roll this is the uh, six inch yeah this is the six inch duct fan 250 CFM fan I will plug it into my outlet here okay Ooh. 
it's so quiet too. <laughs> okay, so don't cut your fingers off, but essentially we're gonna use the water heater tape and we're gonna hang it right there. Actually, probably something close to like that. It's gonna hang and blow out the top vent. By the way, I always clean up my space after I leave. All my wood, all my scrap, everything I've cut, every little piece of everything. You will never even know I was here after I leave, so no need to start that stuff. Got the water heater strap, so this is gonna go around that, and it's gonna be self-tapped. Let me check. Yeah. It'll be self-tapped into this um, tin. I don't know what kind of metal that is, but uh, they've already used self-tappers for the tank in there, so we'll be, we'll be good right there. Alrighty then, got the uh, fan installed there, looking beautiful. So there's a strap on the front, there's a strap behind the wire there, so this fan can't go anywhere. Yeah, it looks a little loose, but it's not going anywhere. It's gonna sit there. Uh, I did have to move it over a little bit towards this side of the vent because of the electronics that were right there, but if we close this up, ooh, can definitely feel it doesn't feel like hot air right now, but it will be hot air later. Again, the idea is to kind of suck air through here to where it gets hot, where the uh, inverter over there is throwing out a bunch of heat and the fan is gonna blow it out the vent. And because it's lubered, once I get this all siliconed, I'm gonna do it today. I'm just, I'm not gonna film it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna seal it up my way and I'm not gonna show you what it looks like. <laughs> I'll be good, I'll be patient, and I'll make it look good. Man, this was a really cool project. Then, come November, when I get to the house probably, we'll have to put some magnets on here somewhere so that I can put a piece of magnetic, like steel, not tin, but something so that I can cap this off and keep it from freezing in here when I use my little plug-in 150 heater instead of the fan, so. The fan's good for the summer when it's warm and I'm using the air conditioner off of solar. The little portable heater in there with this boarded off is going to be for winter. And um, I also want to test it for, for uh, leaks and stuff like that. So tomorrow after the silicone is dried, I'll bring my hose around. Just kind of spray it, make sure everything's good. Make sure everything's still watertight and everything. But Really good project. Just checked my phone again. The part did not come in today to Coombs. I'm really, really hoping it comes in tomorrow. Really hoping, but let me clean up and we'll go find a place to park. I'm not gonna park here at Home Depot overnight. All right, well, I'm gonna sit down and start editing this video together. Should be a fun little process. Who do I got underneath me? The Jacksman, giving me no foots rooms. It gets no foots rooms. I gotta work around the kitty. Okay, don't worry about me. I'll figure it out, Jax. You're too precious. You're precious, buddy. All right, we'll give you some kitty time tonight, okay? Guys, be well, Jax, and I'll see you in about 48 hours. Bye, guys.